Well, hi everyone, welcome back. Um, hello to all my new subscribers and welcome. Thank you for everyone who took the time to leave a like or a comment on the last video. I really appreciated it. Um, thanks especially to the person that told me they missed my video last week. It's, I guess it's nice to be missed. Um, so I'm now really glad that I warned you folks that I might miss. Uh, hi from Lexi too, by the way, obviously. Um, and this week is probably going to be more of the same. Uh, I can't promise a video next week. I'm about 50-50 because here's the deal. My first ballroom show of two for this season is Sunday. So we have rehearsal on Saturday and the show on Sunday. And I'm nervous as heck because usually I feel completely prepared by the time we get to showcase. And this time I don't at all. I'm still making stupid mistakes and I just, I'm... Because of the injuries and only being back for like three months, I'm not as strong as I used to be. And so I'm flubbing easy steps. I don't, you don't need to hear me whine about that. But on the flip side, this is my last week of nights. So on Saturday night, I'm going to stay up all night because I need to be able to go to bed before 4 a.m. on Sunday, which is not something I've had to do in over 13 months. <laughs> uh, in fact, I've been trying to stay up later because initially staying up so late was the problem. <clears throat> so um, I might get some stitching done or I might be zombified by about five or six in the morning, which is also gonna be fun to try to dance when I've stayed up the whole night before questioning the wisdom of this, but I need to survive somehow. And I have to get up at 5 a.m. on Monday, and usually I'm going to bed at three or four, so I need to make myself tired enough to sleep before then. So there's half the life update. Um, sorry if you're here for cross-stitching and you got a life update instead. Usually I try to stick it at the end, but it's gonna be a long one this week since I missed last week. Uh, I got, all of my back orders have come in. Um, so I actually have what I am confidently able to call haul instead of just a little bit of a stash augmentation. Um, yeah, so I've got haul. I've got, uh, even though I didn't get a lot done two weeks ago, this past weekend, it's Monday as I'm filming. So at 12.15 this morning, I finished 24 hours of cross stitch. Um, so yeah, I got quite a bit done. And we'll go ahead and jump right in and tell you all about it. First up, haul. Like I said, all of my back orders came in. Woohoo! And, and some of it wasn't back ordered. Some of it was... Um, just they take a while like this first one which was the first piece that arrived the day after I filmed last time because isn't that always the way this was a piece uh, in I'm in be stitch me's fabric of the month club but I'm in the mix club so every other month I alternate between a color and a neutral and for February I got a neutral and then I saw the color and as soon as I tell you what it's called, you're going to know exactly why I got it. So this is, and I'm custom dies take a while. So this wasn't back order or anything. It just, it was a custom die, so it took a while. So this is 16 count Ada in Flamingo. I love it. Oh, I love, love, love me some Flamingo stuff. Unfortunate side effect of living with my mother. But now seeing all of the flamingo stuff makes me happy and it's a good memory, so I'm glad. So, flamingo. Um, I got two new yarns. As much as I love them, I'm hesitant to recommend. Um, fair warning. 
and I feel bad even saying this because I know there were extenuating circumstances, but I just, I wonder. So my experience may not be your experience. I, there were extenuating circumstances here. Um, I was just a little bit disappointed because the communication was lacking. So I ordered these uh, mid-March and they are now here. And as I said, I don't think it normally takes her that long. Uh, I ordered something around Christmas and it shipped on, I think I ordered it December 11th and it shipped December 17th. So I think things usually go faster. I think there was extenuating circumstance, but and when I emailed and asked what was going on, I didn't get a response. I got a shipping notice. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like maybe there should have been a quick response to say, hey, I got your email. Yes, it's on the way. But it, it is what it is. Um, so these are from Arrowhead Fibers. And the first one, I believe, was a limited edition. I'm not sure that this is available on her website. Um, I think it was dyed especially for a St. Patrick's Day sale, and she just sold the extra um, online. So this is Poseidon. And I had to get it because I am a Percy Jackson fan now. Even before Magical Stitches, I really enjoyed it. So Poseidon. And then this one you can't see very well. Um, it is Sky Pops. And so what it is is it's black, but I don't know if you can see. There are just little pops of color throughout. And you can see a little bit of the green and a little bit of the purple. And there are other colors. And let me see if I can actually unwind this. I'm not going to bother. Um, you'll see it when I actually use it. But Sky Pops. And it's supposed to be the inspiration is fireworks. So very black with just little bursts of color here and there. So they're really pretty and I can't wait to knit with them. Next came my back orders. Uh, and these were from Nashville Expo. And I don't think the patterns were back ordered. I think I was waiting on this. So I got the Sulky Moo the Merrier thread pack. So these are all of the colors that go with the Moo the Merrier patterns that all of the designers from Expo released this year. And I ordered them because I got some of those patterns. So the first one I got is uh, Bendy Stitchies, Thistle the Highland Coo. Um, I have a little bit of Scottish heritage, but my ex's family was very much into Scottish heritage. And I went to uh, Alma College, which is Scotland, US, Al Alma, Michigan is Scotland, USA. And our mascot was the Scots, and there was a lot. Of, there was actually a Scottish arts um, program, so I took Highland dance there. Fell in love with it, and actually competed in Highland dance for several years after I graduated. So I love a lot of Scottish and Highland stuff. And I'm gonna pull this out so that you can see it without the glare. So there's thistle love her little tartan skirt can't wait to work on it this will be my first time ever using sulky threads so if you've got any tips or tricks hit me up and then the other two i've learned my lesson i'm just going to pull them out of the package right now are also the moo the merrier patterns and these are the ink circles patterns, and there were two of them made to coordinate. Uh, and so the first one is Hey Diddle. The cow jumped over the moon. And this is Slick Fiddle. So Hey Diddle Diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. So I'm really excited to stitch these. Also, I think they're adorable. I have so much ink circles. Um, I really need to get to work on some of those, but I think they're adorable. And then the last thing I got is kind of boring, but comes with a story. So, well, it's not really a story. TLDR, in case I start babbling, I screenshotted something from my favorite anime 
and made it into a pattern. So I got a 25 count easy white Lugana, or easy count white Lugana uh, for this full coverage that I'm going to attempt. Which is only my second attempt at converting a picture to a pattern. Uh, so I've mentioned recently that I love the anime and the manga. I love the manga so much because it's gone so much further than the anime. Uh, Yona of the Dawn. And there are no patterns out there for Yona because it's a little bit of a lesser known anime, I think. Um, so there's no patterns and I really wanted to work on one. So I, cre I grabbed a screenshot and I put it into uh, pixel stitch. All right, anyway, here is the screenshot I took. This is actually the pattern conversion, so this is what it should look like. So that is Hawk and Yona, pretty darn close to the end of the last episode. And I just, I've always loved this image. And if I was going to design something, I designed it for this. 140,000 stitches. It's not going to be quite as big as my other massive projects, but it's going to be big. And that's on 25 count Lugana. First time I'm going to try stitching Lugana one, uh, one over one. So it's also going to be an adventure. That said, I'm not planning on starting that anytime in the near future. Famous last words, right? I have a lot of other things that I need to work on right now. My goal is to try to get through at least, try to finish at least two of the Christmas gifts before I touch that. But I'm a weak, weak person, so we'll see. I will have more haul for y'all next week. Uh, my fabric from Be fabric of the month from Be Stitch Me is on the way. It's a color month, so be ready for something bright. Um, I found a, subs a new subscription box that I found intriguing, Taylor and Cromwell who designed the Broadway stitch along that I am technically a part of but haven't started yet because I've got way too many projects um, and who they've had several patterns I just fell in love with. They have launched a subscription box um, and I've ordered the first one. The first month's theme was Hamilton. Uh, there are several that I, I'm very interested in, but I decided to just go ahead and order one before I committed to a three or six month series just because I don't know what all, well, I don't know if I'm going to like it. So I'm, I ordered the first one to see if I like the general theme and the general way that they're putting things together. And again, the theme is Hamilton. It's the May box, so it should ship next week. Um, so in two weeks, should have that for floss tube. But upcoming July is Rick Riordan, and I think I just talked about my love of Percy Jackson. Um, somewhere in there, I think August is Wicked. October, there's a Halloween creepy pasta one. December is Hades Town. Um, so yeah, there is a lot coming up that I'm interested in. Um, but I'm gonna wait and see what the Hamilton box is like before I commit to another one or three or six. Because they've also got 2022 up and some of those look interesting as well. All right, let's jump into the whips. Uh, first week, I didn't get a lot done uh, as I had predicted because most of my weekend was taken up with dance and celebrating my birthday. Thank you for the birthday wishes. I had a great weekend, it was fun. We binged anime, we drank wine, um, we ate ice cream, it was a good time. So, I didn't get a lot of stitching done. But I did work on something, I did, the past two weeks I've been 50% on the Magical Stitches prompts, I've been doing half. And so two weeks ago, one of the prompts was to stitch on something that has the number two and the number three in it. And that gave me a good excuse to pull out beer and wine, or just for me, just wine. Connect camera. So I'm just working on wine, but there's also beer. 
this is done on 28 count linen that I dyed myself and this is I've fallen victim to the classic Joann's can't create a square fabric uh, because I wasn't sure how my dyeing was going to turn out so I went and I bought a cheap square of fabric at Joann's and here's what I've got so far adorable right the only problem is that if you look at the pattern And then you look at my stitching, you will see that this is supposed to be, excuse me, taller than it is wide. And that is not what I've got. So I've heard people say it a million times. Here is just another reminder. Joanne's fabric is not square. Because if it was, this would be taller than it is wide. And it's fine. This is just something for my personal use and it doesn't really distort things too much. I mean, the letters and stuff look a little weird. Um, but it doesn't distort it like it would if it was an actual design. So it's one of the reasons I didn't feel too worried about working on it for this one. The thing I am more concerned about is I think I'm going to run out of thread. This is a fancy floss. This is a classic Colorworks Grape Fizz. And so I'm really worried that when I go to replace it, I'm going to have a dial out problem. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Just, I'm really worried. Um, that I'm going to run out of thread. So then, the following week, I also did two of the Magical Stitches prompts. And this was last week. Um, and it was because those prompts gave me a chance to pull out one of the big boys. Uh... The prompts were, well, first of all, for both prompts that I used, I chose Deal Struck, which you haven't seen in a while. Uh, and the last time you saw it, hopefully I'm going to be able to track down a picture. So the last time you saw it, it probably looked something like this. And this week I had two prompts for magical stitches. The first one was a prompt of something that contains a star. So I used the fact that there are pentagrams in Ciel's eye and on Sebastian's hand as my stars. And then the other prompt was to stitch something with an angel on it. And so I kind of flipped that one on its head and talked about how in a some mythologies and origin stories for demons, they are actually fallen angels. So that's how I did that. So again, here's where it was. And here after two prompts and then working on it a little bit on 24 hours of cross stitch is where I am now. So still not terribly exciting. Um, I am at about not quite one and a half percent done with this one. Uh, you can start to see instead of just being a blob, this is starting to look like a hand where you can see the finger extending down. Um, over here, I'm about 15 rows from the bottom of the first row of pages. So I'm really close to defining the edges of the page. So like right here, and then I think like right in here somewhere, just the very littlest bit of this hand is on page one. Page one is almost completely black, which is what makes it so exciting. Um, so slowly, 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 but surely. And I don't intend to add this to the regular rotation. Um, probably gonna take it out of the cue snap and hang it back up and leave it for a while. 
But at some point, I really want to get to work on this because I love that picture and I would like to see it look like more than just a shapeless blob. And it's going to be a long time, months and months and months, if not years, before that happens. So that was Magical Stitches prompts. The rest of the time, my next priority was getting my um, extra credit done. So that's the 500, 1,000 and 1,500 um, stitch bundles uh, on each of the three projects. And again, I chose Cinderella and Defying Gravity and Sebastian. These are not, like when I say I got the 500 done, the last time I showed these to you, they were not like 1,500 stitches ago. With the exception of Defying Gravity, I think 860 of those stitches went in, in this past weekend. Um, but the other ones I, I've been working on off and on to slowly build up to that 500. So I think the last time you saw them, like Cinderella was, well, the last time you saw Cinderella, it was here. And as a reminder, this is what it's going to look like. And so I went ahead and I finished the last of the stitches and I think that was about 250 stitches. And here's where I'm at now. Again, I still feel okay posting this one on Instagram because you can't really, t I, just, I don't think you can really tell what it is. Uh, right here is Cinderella's head, and then the rest of it gets into her ball gown, but I don't really feel like you can tell that from the shape yet, number one. And number two, the person I'm making it for has no clue that they're getting anything from me, so even if they saw it, they would probably go, oh, that's pretty, and not realize that it was a gift for them. So for now, still posting this one on Instagram. The next one I worked on was Defying Gravity. And as I said, this one, I actually got quite a bit done this weekend. This was my thousand stitch, and the last time you saw it, I only had about 163 of those in, so it was like this. And now, here we are. I got so much done, so much black. I said the theme of this 24 hours of cross stitch was back in black between, um, between this one and Deal Struck and Sebastian um, and my new start that you're going to see. So much black, I stitched so much black. My poor cone is the best investment I ever made. I'll give you a close up of that again because you can see I got all of this, all of this done. And then I got a little bit of green, I think this part and these letters. Um, but yeah, so much black, so much black stitching this weekend. And then the last of the bundle, which if you follow me on Instagram, I affectionately refer to as the mystery Christmas gift because that person knows they're getting a gift and as soon as they saw it, they would know it was this. And that's Sebastian. And the last time you saw him, he was something like this. And now, I got quite a bit done on Sebastian, a lot more than I actually even intended. So here he is. I have a page finish. So right down here is the bottom of page one. And as you can see, I am well into page two, uh, which actually wasn't my intention. I intended to start up here on page three and fill in like the rest of the face. But now I'm thinking I might just go ahead and do page two um, because I've got so much of it in already. And how that happened was this, I talk about so much black. This project is literally half black. If you look at the pattern keeper count for a number of stitches, it's 9,600 stitches and something like 
4,800 of them were black. So to keep me from being at the end and having to do nothing but black for days and days on end, I've been alternating a strand of black, a strand of color, a strand of black, a strand of color. So when I got to the end of the first page uh, with the black, I still had a lot to fill it right here. And that, but I didn't want to stop doing my, my alternating black because otherwise then when I get up here, like this is all going to be black. And I've got a lot more down here because his uniform is black as well. So I just kept going. And you can see I did a little bit up here and then I decided, no, I'm just going to fill in down here because it's easier with Pattern Keeper to move up and down a little bit than to scroll all the way over to up here. Hi, boo. What you doing? Please don't hit that. Um... Anyway, so yeah, I decided it was just easier to move down and stitch. And now I've got so much of this one done that I might just stay down there. I'm very happy with this. I was a little nervous. So please tell me if you can see some definition here. There's a really light lavender that when I put it up against the B5200, I can barely tell the difference. And I think I can see it. Um, because this little bit of white here is supposed to be the tip of his finger. Because if you've ever seen Black Butler, this is a pretty common, like, Sebastian image. So that's supposed to be the tip of his finger, and I just worry that it's not showing up well. Um... So please let me know if you can tell that there's something different about those stitches. Obviously, I don't expect you to be able to tell that it's a finger yet because I haven't gotten very far. But um, I can see it, and I don't know if I can see it because I know that it's there or not. And I'm just a little bit nervous about it. But other than that, I'm very excited about this one. I think I'm at... For somewhere between 43 and 45. I was at 43.2% when I finished 24 hours of cross stitch and then I stayed up a little bit later and worked on it some more. So I might be a little further. Then I have two other things that I worked on for 24 hours of cross stitch. The first one is I was thinking back on magical stitches and realized that I was signed up to do the full coverage challenge and I haven't even started it yet. So I sat down and I did the math because for the full coverage challenge, I have to get in 7,000 stitches on my designated full coverage. And this was before I had deal struck or else duh, that would be the designated full coverage because I love it so much. Um, I didn't have it at the time, so I chose Charting Creations Bookworm. And then didn't touch it at all. But I've done the math, and it is still possible for me to finish 7,000 stitches by the end of the year. If I do about, starting May 1st, I would have to do a little bit less than 30 stitches a day. So I've set myself a new goal of trying to do 50 stitches a day on this so that on days, obviously, that I something comes up and I can't work on it, uh, I, I've built myself in a little bit of a cushion. So the last time you saw this probably was my whip parade, uh, and it would have looked something like this. And the little sign in the corner that says Grover, that was my, um, that was for Magical Stitches on January 1st. They gave us a word to prove that we had, that this was where everything was on January 1st. So we didn't like take things we'd been working on before and say, look, I've got a thousand stitches done and 900 of them were done in December. Um, I mean, most people are honest. It's like, it's just, just a goofy little game, but you never know. So yeah, so Grover is the code word. So if you ever see pictures where that's posted, that's why, um, because that was the picture I used for magical stitches. Uh, I Anyway, blah, 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 blah. I said all that to say I got about 200 stitches done, uh, and this one is even bigger than Deal Struck. This is 226,000 plus stitches to Deal Struck's 202,000. Uh, 
So I'm right at about 500 with the 200 stitches that I did this weekend. And here's where I am. Nothing too exciting. Nothing to see here, folks. Barely a little bit. I'm working on the first book on the bookshelf. So this one's going to be a slow but sure. My goal is to try to get, let's see, 30 stitches a day over seven days. It's about 210 stitches, at least 200 stitches a week in on this one, even if I don't get to work on it every day. Uh, so hopefully it'll start to take shape, but I did the math and even then it's only going to be something like this big a square that I get done by the end of the year. Um, so this is a project that's probably going to be marked in decades, particularly since it's not a particular favorite. Um, it's going to be gorgeous when it's done, but it is confetti hell and I don't get very excited about it. Not like I do with deal struck. Um, my plan, by the way, is once I finish the gifts to start using my big boys as my extra credit every month, my 500, 1,000, and 1,500. So it would be Deal Struck and Bookworm and Yona. But I got to get my gifts done first, and I'm a long way off on those. Defying Gravity is a little bit more than halfway, but it's still got probably 7,500 stitches left on it. And that's at a generous, um, Sebastian's not quite halfway and has about 5,000 stitches left. And those are the two that are the furthest. Uh, Cinderella's right at 10% done. And then the other two, we do Disney and Grimm's, are not in Pattern Keeper, so I can't give you a specific percentage. But Grimm's is definitely less than halfway because I don't have six months done. And we do Disney is barely started. So the last thing I did for 24 hours of cross stitch was if you watch Stitches by Shelby, and if you don't, you should, then you will know that she issued a challenge or kind of a suggestion that she was going to do a new start in honor of her birthday, which as I'm filming this is tomorrow. Um, as I'm posting it, it will have been probably the day before. I might post this Tuesday night if I get a little ahead of myself. I don't know yet. Um, but at any rate, her birthday is upcoming. My birthday was last weekend, so she challenged us to work on a new start, something we'd really been wanting to work on, and I had kind of wanted to do something for my birthday, but I don't really, didn't really know what, so I thought that sounded as good as anything else. So I started, and now it's buried under all of my I started this one, which I fell in love with the moment I saw it and ordered it as soon as it went on sale. Uh, this is Autumn Lane Stitchery's Potions and Spells. And I only got about 200 stitches in on it. This is done on 16 count Ice Queen by Be Stitch Me. And here's all the further I got. And there's no previous picture because previous picture would have been a blank canvas. So I love this one. I was excited to finally have an excuse to start it. That said, as soon as I get done filming, I'm taking it out of the Q-snap and I'm hanging it up because it is nowhere near the priority bin. Plans for this week. Magical Stitches prompt is not really anything that's going to get me anywhere on my goals, so I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to, if I do get to stitch in the next four or five days, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stitch on the building, the cabins. Um, probably work on Sebastian. I think that's my best next shot at having a finish. Because even though percentage-wise Defying Gravity is further, um, I almost have as much left to do on Defying Gravity as the original size of Sebastian. It was that much bigger. So, 
yeah. Um, Sebastian is probably going to be my next finish, so I'm going to focus most of my time on that one with Defying Gravity and Cinderella thrown in there for good measure. Once one of those gets done, I will pull one of the other two gifts out and add it to the rotation. Um, so yeah, until, until May 1st, that's what I'm going to be working on. May 1st! Mania is here! Uh, I'm debating if I want to do the video diary style like I did last year. Um, where I videoed every little start and then strung them together so that the first two weeks I had the video diary of all of my starts in order and exactly how far I got on all of them instead of my traditional uh, weekly whip update. If you have a preference, let me know. Um, it was a lot of work to kind of do the same thing that I normally do, but it was also kind of fun and I think it helped keep me on task. So as a review, I have 15 new starts for the month of May. 12 of them are Tiny Modernist Words to Live By, which is a 13 part series and part two is already finished. Um, then I have two hands-on design flamingo Christmas ornaments, ink circles, uh, fairy ring around the rosy. Uh, Part one of Tiny Modernist and Fairy Ring Around the Rosie may not count as smalls. I'm not sure. I'll have to do the math. Um, but that's another thing is Magical Stitches had a smalls challenge. And I decided not to participate because as you noticed, everything I do is massively huge. Um, I don't really do smalls. But since I've decided to do this challenge, or since I've decided to do smalls for Mania, I think I'll go back and add the... Um, add them to my Magical Stitches album, designate them as smalls, and use them for the smalls challenge. After the first 15 days of May, when I have no more projects to start, because I'm not going to start another 15. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I totally have a full set of DMC and enough fabric and enough patterns to do that. So I'm really trying to talk myself out of that. I'm not, I don't need to suddenly have 60 whips. I don't. It's not like I work on all of them anyway. Uh, but my goal is to try to get, I don't normally stitch every day. Uh, especially considering life update stuff that will be coming up. Uh, I, I don't normally stitch every day. But for the rest of May, from May 16th through 31st, my goal is to put in at least 100 stitches a day. Um, which again, since I've been kind of wanting to do that with bookworm anyway, so put 50 stitches on bookworm and then put 50 stitches at least on something else. Because usually once I sit down to stitch, if I've picked the right project, I get sucked in. And 50 stitches will lead to more than 50 stitches. So that's my goal. I don't know what I'll work on. Um, probably try, gonna try to focus on my gifts. I'd like to get those done. At the same time, all of my stitch alongs are calling my name. Um, for review, I've got Tiny Modernist Zodiac Stitch Along. I've got uh, Dark Queen of the Seas from Autumn Lane Stitchery. I've got the um, Everything is Fine, the Good Place Stitch Along from Son of a Stitch. I've got the Wonders of the Solar System from Climbing Goats Designs um, that is barely, barely started. And I've got the Broadway Stitch Along from Taylor and Cromwell that is not started at all. I think that's it. Oh no, and then I have There Is No Planet B, the Endangered Stitch Al Species Stitch Along from Clouds Factory. I have a lot of stitch alongs. I haven't been touching them. Um, so maybe I'll try to work on those. Mostly I just, I've been stitching on my gifts because I don't wanna relive the great Christmas panic of 2019. Uh, the last Christmas gift, the last Christmas gift from the great P Christmas panic of 2019 went out at the beginning of June. 
So I don't want that to happen this year. I want these all to be done. And some of these projects are pretty massive. Defying gravity is probably the biggest full cut. Well, it's not, pro there's no probably about it. Defying gravity is the biggest full coverage I've ever done. And it's taking a long time. Uh, Sebastian is practically full coverage, even though it's not as big. Uh, if you've seen This Is Fine, which I did for the Great Christmas Panic of 2019, uh, it's probably about the same size. Uh, Cinderella and Grimm's Fairy Tales both involve a lot of color switching. They just don't stitch fast. And um, the same with We Do Disney. Because it's lettering, it's a lot of counting. Um, so that one's going to be challenging as well. So they're all challenging, and I'm just very nervous about finish th finishing them. So as much as it's eating at me to not be caught up on my stitch-alongs, that's more important. So, yeah. Mm, sorry, it's not as exciting of a floss tube because I'm not constantly rotating out. You're seeing the same three or four projects over and over again. Um, so I try to pull a different one in occasionally, but I'm just... I don't want to be in that situation again where I'm months and months away from Christmas and things still are not done. Okay. Uh, life update. Oh boy. I mentioned part of this before. The last couple weeks have been really rough. Uh, I don't know why. It's just nothing has been working at work. Uh, so I've been anxious, I've been on edge, I've been, uh, that's why I didn't, one of the reasons I didn't get a lot of stitching done, and it was just, my birthday weekend was a nice reprieve, I actually relaxed, I had some fun, and then I jumped right back in and nothing was better at work. Um, I think I've got a handle on things now this week, I think I finally... Uh, got a couple of things that were going wrong. I've managed to pull them back in. So hopefully this week I'll be a little bit calmer. That said, this is my last week of night shift. And I'm depressed already. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before. So it was shortly after I started floss tubing that I went to night shift. Turns out I'm a night owl. And I, I always kind of knew that. I always had a hard time. I'd go to bed religiously at 10 o'clock. My butt was in bed. Did I sleep at 10? No. It would often be midnight, 1, 2 in the morning before I'd fall asleep. And I just thought I had insomnia. But turns out, if you go to bed at 2 and you get up at 10, that's 8 hours. Uh, so this night shift has been great for me. I didn't realize that I usually had a low-grade headache until I was rested and suddenly didn't have it anymore. So I've been rested. I've been alert. Uh, I can probably count on both hands the number of times I've used an alarm clock to wake up in the past, um, past 13, almost 14 months. And I am really scared that when I go back to days, I'm just going to go right back to the insomnia and the headache and the just generally not feeling well and zombie carry. So I'm nervous. Uh, I'm super excited to get to see some of my friends that I don't get to see very often because we're on opposing shifts. But I also... I am an introvert by nature, and my desk is located in a very busy part of the office. So I'm also very nervous that I am going to be overwhelmed with the noise and the activity and just everything. So my noise-canceling headphones are charged up. Uh, fortunately, my lab space is quite isolated, so if I get overwhelmed, I can go back there, just take my work in the back. But I'm still, I'm nervous. And I'm not looking forward to it. And yeah. So my last night, since I work an alternate work schedule, my last night of work, night work is Thursday. 
Although it's my overtime week, so I might work Friday night too. I don't know yet. So yeah, that's gonna be a huge change. It'll be interesting to see how it affects my floss tubing because I will start shooting at night instead of during the day. Uh, one thing that that might help with is I'll be able to film in my craft room so I won't have to drag everything down the hall to the guest room all the time. And I shouldn't have nearly the lighting issues that I've had in the past because it'll usually be dark when I'm filming. Showcases this weekend. Uh, we have one final rehearsal. We did our dress rehearsal. <laughs> In the middle of 24 hours of cross stitch was picture day. And as long as we were already wearing our costumes for pictures, we did our dress rehearsal um, for my exhibition numbers. So the exhibition is Sunday evening. Again, as I said, I'm really nervous. This is my first exhibition back from since I was injured. And I just, I don't feel the confidence that I normally feel going into a show. And I'm very nervous. So it's the first of two shows and then the second show is at the end of May. Excited and terrified at the same time. We'll see how it goes, I'll let you know. Let's see, going back to work, dance. I get to have my first Spanish lesson in over a year uh, next week as well, because since I'll be on days, I can actually, I'm actually available when my tutor is available. So I'm excited for that. I haven't talked to her. I, we've been emailing a little bit back and forth over my break, um, but I haven't actually had a chance to speak with her in probably a year. So I'm excited for that. Um, next week, the, the one nice thing about going back to days is I'm being eased in slowly. And originally they had set the date for our return as May 9th, the week of May 9th. I think May 9th is actually a Sunday. Um, but we have uh, online training for two days next week. And so I was gonna have to be up in time to be online at eight anyway. So I said, I'll go ahead and go back to days that week because two of the four days that I work, I was gonna have to get up anyway. And everybody else on the night shift agreed, all three of us <laughs> that are still left agreed. So this Thursday is uh, the last night of night shift. Um, and then next week I have two days of Online training at home, that could bode well for my knitting because I tend to fidget when I get into, when I'm lectured at all day. So I usually pull out my knitting because it's all stockinette stitch. It's not like I have to do anything to keep track of what I'm doing. Um, so I can knit and that keeps my fingers busy and that lets my brain focus a little bit better. Does anyone else have that problem? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm weird. But so that kind of bodes well for my knitting. Hopefully I'll be able to show you part of a sock by the time I get done. I'm still working on my first pair of socks. I'm on the gusset right now. I turned the heel last week and I'd show you except it's downstairs in my car. Um, so I turned the heel and I'm working on the gusset. So let's see. That's... Mm -hmm. That's about it. Uh, reading, watching, listening. I did 24 hours of cross stitch and I did it almost all in complete silence. Uh, I watched one documentary, which is Netflix, one documentary series, which was Netflix The Ripper, which is not about Jack the Ripper. It's about the Yorkshire Rip Ripper in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Um, and I knew that going in. I knew it wasn't about Jack the Ripper. Just, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> um, and it was fairly interesting if you like true crime documentaries. I It kept my attention. Uh, I like to watch documentaries when I stitch because I don't have to look at the screen. I don't have to worry about a silent scene or an action that's being done that I'm not gonna see because I'm looking down. Um, 
So if you hear me talk a lot about documentaries, that's why. And then I just, I was working on Sebastian, so I put in Black Butler Book of Murder, which is my absolute favorite two episodes of anime ever. And I watched those. And I think the rest of the time I was mostly stitching in silence. And I don't know why, but lately that seems to be my mood. Uh, part of it is, okay, I can't turn my TV on with the remote control. I don't know why. It doesn't do that anymore. I can use any other button on the remote control. I can change the volume. I can change the channels. I can do anything else. I can't turn my TV on with the remote control. So once I sit down and start to stitch and I'm in the groove, if I want to watch TV, I have to stop, put everything down, get up and go turn the TV on. And it just starts to feel like a hassle. Uh, once I've started stitching and I just, I need to remember to start doing it before I start stitching or else I'm never going to get any of those millions of things on my to watch lists watched. So yeah, not a lot of watching. I watched the Ripper. Again, if you like true crime, it might be worth a check out. Uh, I finished D-Day Girls for reading and that was kind of gut wrenching at the end. I was, to hear how these people ended, um, like you follow these people all the way through, and it's not just the women, the men that were working with them, and um, not all, spoiler alert, not all of them made it, made it out. And so it was just really, It was such an interesting read. I found, again, I found it a little bit distracting. The author read the book and she's not a professional narrator. And that, so that was kind of, um, that gave me some issues, but not too much. It, it was an excellent book. I really liked it. Uh, once that was finished, I started To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher pa Paolini. Um, I'm not very far in. And I don't know if I'll be able to finish it. Not because it's not any good. It's very good. Um, it's also probably... It's hard for me to tell how long audiobooks are because the way that my audiobook app goes, it, it downloads individual files. But the files are usually 60 to 70 minutes long. And there are 34 of them for this book. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it done in the next two weeks. Uh, just because I don't usually, I usually only listen to her about an hour a day and that's not going to cut it. I need to listen to you over two hours a day. Um, I'm toying with, I have a bunch of audible credits. I'm toying with going ahead and getting it. Uh, we'll see how I feel as I get further into the book and it gets closer to the due date for the book. I might just buy it and get it for myself. So that's really all I've been working on. Those two pretty much took up the whole time. Um, I'm not sure the last time I talked if I had mentioned where I was in Black Butler. I'm in the middle of the Green Witch arc, which is a really good arc. Um, my friend always asks me why I am so... Um, adamant in my dislike of the characters from season two of the anime. <laughs> say Because the anime is not manga canon and if they had not done that and they had gone ahead and done the next arc, this arc would have been animated and it would have been so cool. Well, maybe it wouldn't have been. There's the school arc in between, but that was short. Um, here we go, down the rabbit hole of talking about anime and manga and giving you all my opinions again. But anyway, I'm in the middle of the Green Witch arc. Um, I have the next three volumes. I have the last three volumes that my library has of Blue Exorcist. So I'm going to be caught up on that one shortly to the point where I'm at with Yona where like I'm waiting for the new volumes to come out. So I need a new manga. So if anyone's got any suggestions, I'm all ears. Um, so that's all the reading, I think. 
Oh, I will be starting the, on May 1st, I'll start the audiobook version of uh, Percy Jackson book four, which is the Battle of the Labyrinth, I think. So things are coming to a head there. Um, I've already read those. I've read the first five, so it won't be any new material for me until we get to Jul no, we're taking July off until we get to August and we get to um, the second series. So that's reading, listening to, watching. I think that's it. And as predicted, this is super long. So <laughs> I'm really glad I recorded on Monday because I think it's going to take me a while to edit. Uh, probably <laughs> Monday and Tuesday. So that's it. The next time I see you, we will be in the throes of mania. Uh, enjoy. I hope everybody has... I keep, well, that's the one thing. Watching. I am super, super behind on my floss tube. Like two and three weeks on some people. So I'll work on it. I'm trying to get caught up. I just haven't really had a I can't promise anything until June. I can't promise I can't promise a weekly floss tube episode. I can't promise I will be caught up on all my watching. I can't promise anything until June. Let me get through dance month and then uh, let me get through my first month back on days and then we'll see how things are. Um, yeah, but for those that I am having a chance to catch up on, I'm really excited to see all of your mania plans. Uh, hope everybody has a great week. So I hope you all stay safe and stay healthy and that I'll see you next time. Bye!